Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on factor theorem, division and integration and exam style question. We're going to be taking a look at this question which is relevant for any students of A-level mathematics. However, if you are studying for another qualification or an exam, then take a look at the question. It might be relevant for you as well. We're going to be using a Casio Classwiz FX991EX to support us in this video. However, provided your calculator has a definite integration feature, you're going to be able to follow along and it's helpful to have a polynomial solver as well. Let's take a look at the question. We've got FX at the top here. On the right, we've got a graph showing a sketch of part of the curve with that equation. So part A, we need to use factor theorem to show that x plus 4 is a factor of fx. Then we've got to write fx in the form of, well, that is factor and quotient. And then hence, factorize fx completely. Part D, using the answer from part C, we need to determine the x-coordinates where the curve intersects the x-axis. And then finally, part E, determine the total shaded area shown on the graph. And I've split that into two different shaded areas there, uh, a red area and a blue area. We need both of that combined area to answer that question. We're going to be using full methods here with the calculator for support to hopefully verify our answers, but also to give us the confidence that we're heading in the right direction. So let's start with part A. So we need to use factor theorem to show that x plus four is a factor of fx. Now with factor theorem, what we're looking for is we're looking for that factor to equal zero to find a value of x that we can then substitute into fx and we should get zero if the factor theorem holds true. So let's look at the value of x that we need for this. So if x plus four equals zero, that means we have an x value of negative four. If we substitute negative four into our fx, we should get zero as our answer. Now we want to show that this is being done. So the first thing that you might want to show is to write it as if you have substituted negative four into the function of x. Typically a nice way to do this is to use brackets around your substitution. So you can show all the terms with a substituted negative four. Then the next line, what we might want to do is to just simplify all those individual terms. So we've just got single values. So it's negative 128 plus 16 plus 92 plus 20. And what you can do then, you can use your calculator for this or in your head, probably your calculator might be best just to total those up and check that they equal zero, which they do. And what you also need to make sure that you include this is a short conclusion, just confirming how the factor theorem shows that this is a factor. As f negative four equals zero, therefore x plus four is a factor of fx. So you just need that conclusion in there to finish that off. Part b, write fx in the form x plus four, and then we've got a quotient form here, which is a quadratic. We've got a, b, and c there, which are gonna be numbers. Now I've abridged the question here slightly. It might be, it says something like where a, b, and c are integer values to be found or something similar. Now we're going to be using polynomial division. Personally speaking, I don't like long division the way it's set up. I find it a little bit confusing and I know many students do too. If you're confident with long polynomial division and that's what you prefer to use, then by all means go ahead and do that. I prefer using the multiplication grid in reverse to be able to find out what that quotient might be when we divide. So I'm going to show you that way. I've got a grid set up here. We've got two rows. Now the rows are going to be for the two terms that are in the factor. So the first term is x and the second term is four, so positive four x plus four is our factor. And then what I've done so far is I've created one column and we can create more as we go along as needed. What I'm going to write in the first cell here is the first term of fx. So that is two x cubed. I'm going to write the quotient here up at the top above it, just as you write it with long polynomial division. So what you need to think to yourself is, well, what do I need to multiply 
x by, x being at the end of the first row here, what do we need to multiply x by to get 2x cubed? Well, that would be 2x squared. And we're just going to place that here at the top of the column. In the cell below, you just need to think, well, what is 2x squared multiplied by positive 4? 2x squared multiplied by positive 4, that's 8x squared. And we'll write that in. We've got a little bit more to go, so I'm just going to put an extra column in here. Now what I'm going to do is make a comparison between the x squared term that we have so far in the grid and the x squared term that we have in fx. Now in fx we've just got x squared, so that's 1x squared. And that has come from combining two terms that will go in these diagonally opposite cells. So both of these are x squared terms. So you just need to think, well, how do I get from 8x squared to just x squared? What would I need to do? Well, I'd need to subtract 7x squared. So here we're going to put negative minus 7x squared so that these two cells combined would make x squared. So that's the key point there. And then we're going to think the same as we did with the first column here. What do I need to multiply x by to get negative 7x squared? Well, it's negative 7x. And then what is negative 7x times positive 4? That's negative 28x. And then a similar thing here. So diagonally to the right uh, cell is going to add with negative 28x. We're going to look at making the x term that is in fx, which is negative 23x minus 23x. What do I need to add to negative 28x to get negative 23? Well, it is plus 5x. And I'll put a plus in here, I'll put it in brackets. You can just put 5x, we'll just assume it is positive, or you can put plus in as well if you prefer. And once again, it's the same process. What do I need to pull, multiply x by to get 5x? It's plus 5, positive 5. So I'm going to put that at the top of the column here. And then finally, we've got positive 5 multiplied by positive 4. That is 20. And 20 matches actually the number that we have on the end of fx. There's no remainder, which is what we were expecting. And so here at the top here, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 is the quotient. So we can put that in the form x plus 4, and then in the second bracket, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. A there is 2, our B is negative 7, and our C is positive 5. And then part C, it says hence. So we're going to be using the information from part B. Hence, factorize fx completely. Now, it's up to you to choose what you want to do here. You can use the polynomial solver to find the solutions for fx, essentially answering part D. Now, this could be a good place to do this. Now, you need to be very, very careful with using this solve to factorize thing. It is a good thing if you know what you're doing. However, some students sometimes get a little bit confused, and so you've got to be careful. Let's do that now and have those solutions ready because they'll be a good check for part D. But also we could use them if we wanted to to help us factorize. However, we'll do a full method afterwards just to make sure that everything's okay. So let's go to menu and then down to equation function or select A and then we want the polynomial solver We've got a cubic here, fx, so that is 3. And then we just need to input the coefficients here. 2x cubed, 1x squared, minus 23x, and then plus 20. And press equals when we're done. And here's our first solution, negative 4. This is the one that we knew about because we knew x plus 4 was a factor. And here we have... A second x value there, 5 over 2, and a third one of 1. So what I would do if I was in the exam, I'd maybe just write these off to the side, maybe circle them or put a little bubble around them, just so you've got that information ready. 
so that we can check up on that later. Now you can use those if you know what to do to help you to factorize that, but you just need to be careful. Let's just do the factorization now uh, so that we can fully factorize it. We know one factor is x plus four. So what we need to do is to factorize 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. We've got to factorize that quadratic so that we can put that into two brackets. So we'll set up two brackets. If I want 2x squared, what I know is one of those brackets is going to start with 2x. The second bracket is going to start with x. So 2x and x are going to be the beginning of, of the bracket. And we've got a negative in the middle. We've got a positive on the end, positive 5. That's going to come from two negatives within the factor. So it's 2x minus an x minus, and then we've just got to think about what the number would be in that. Well, the number have to multiply together to give you five, because five's a prime number, that's going to be one and five. It's just which way round is it going to go? Well, if I do the five in the bracket with the 2x, then I'll know that when I did the multiplication of the expansion, then I'd get just x times negative five that would give me negative 5x and then the 1 in the other bracket I'd have then 2x times negative 1 which is minus 2x and though minus 5x minus 2x gives me the minus 7x in the middle so therefore it's got to be that way around so I've got the fully factorized form here x plus 4 x minus 1 2x minus 5 be careful here Remember, one of the factors would not be x minus 5 over 2. Yeah, if you're doing that from the solution, you've got to be careful with that. That's going to be written as 2x minus 5. So just be super careful how you would write that if you're coming at, at this question using that method. Okay, then, so part D, we are then finding the x coordinates. Well, we know what they are. We've already got those in the bank ready for us to check. But how can we use the answer from part C? Well, what we need to do is to solve each of those factors equal to zero. So if x plus four equals zero, then x is negative four, which we know from part A. That is actually going to be the solution on the graph, which is furthest to the left. And then we can see on the graph that we've actually got two positive solutions on there. Well, x minus one, if that was equal to zero, x would equal one. And if 2x minus 5 equals 0, well, if we were solving that, add 5 and then divide by 2, we'd get x equals 5 over 2, which is our other solution. So just checking those off with what we were expecting from the calculator solver there, we know that they are the x-coordinates of the intercept with the x-axis there. So finally, part E. This is going to take a little bit more time than the other sections. Now, as it says determine the total shaded area shown on the sketch, we're going to be using the calculator to help us out there. It may be in the exam you need to use a full method of substituting in the values, but I will show you on this one how we can do it on the calculator. And you could do this first, maybe before you do an algebraic method with substitution so that you've got the solutions there ready to check. Or you could do it afterwards if you've got time in order to be able to check that you've got the right answer. So if you want to do this algebraically, you may want to pause the video now and give it a go. If you just want to follow along with the calculator method, then let's go through that now. Okay, so back into calculate mode. What we want to do is press the integration button. And what we want to do is to write here the original fx that we had. So just carefully input that using the x button. 2x cubed plus x squared minus 23x plus 20. Okay, navigate right and we need to input some limits. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the red area and the blue area separately. So let's call the red area area A and the blue area area B. We'll do them separately because one is below the x-axis and one is above the x-axis and we want to add the absolute value of these areas together so that we can get the correct cumulative total of the area. 
So let's do the red section, section A first. So we want some limits there. Well, the leftmost limit there is negative four. So that's the low limit. And then that goes all the way up to one. So we've got between four and negative one. If you press equals, then we have our area here, 500 over three as a fraction. If you press SD at this point, then you'll be able to get the decimal equivalent of that. Let's flick back to the fraction. Now what we're going to do, because we're going to do a further calculation with this adding the areas together, I'm going to store this in A. So it's area A, so it's store, and then just press the button A. No need for alpha at that point. So 500 over three is our value stored in A. Now what we can do sneakily here is we can use the same input that we just uh, used for this in order to work out at the area for part B. So what you need to do, be careful here, is just navigate up on the calculator, back to the where we inputted FX, and then navigate left to go to the end of the DX. And then if you navigate left again, then you can see that we are around where we inputted the limits. So if we just delete our old limits off, and then we put our new limits in for the blue area, area B, well, the lower limit this time is one, and the upper limit is five over two. And then if we press equals to confirm, well, then we've used the same input that we did before to get the area this time of area B. Now notice that it is negative. This simply indicates that it is below the X axis, but we need to be careful when we're adding the values of the areas together. So the fact that it's negative indicates that it's below the x-axis on there. So let's store this in B, store B. And that's stored now. Now what we want to do is to combine the total areas of A and B. Now because B is negative, what we need to do here is we need to input a subtract when we do this. I'll show you an alternative way afterwards. So it's going to be alpha A subtract alpha b essentially we're subtracting a negative number so we're adding the value of it press equals and here we have it. it's a bit of a complex fraction 16,621 over 96 or you can press sd if you want the decimal equivalent there 173.135 to three decimal places an alternative way that we could do this is we could do alpha and a and then add and then we want to add the absolute value so it's shift and absolute value of b so that we just take the actual positive amount there the absolute amount of it and add it on so we you can see that we get the same answer there so that's an alternative option if you prefer or if you're, you're not quite sure whether you should add or subtract at that point so if you use the absolute values then you can always use add so what you might want to do, if, if you've done this algebraically, you might want to check and shown all your substitutions, you might want to check that you've got the same results as you have here. I think it's quite a good thing to do anyway, even if you're asked to provide uh, a full method. A great thing to do first, so we've already got the answer there ready so that you can then check when you're doing your integrations, if you've got the correct amounts for the uh, red area and the blue area, the separate areas as you go along before you then do your final calculation. It gives you that little bit more confidence that you're going in the right direction when answering the question. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.